This presentation gives an overview of the SIMAP Diffuse Pollution Risk Mapping Approach. SIMAP produces detailed maps of where in the landscape diffuse pollution is likely to be originating. It's capable of doing this across a whole range of scales, from small headwaters to large catchments. The approach aims to identify where in the landscape the problem is most likely to be originating. If you can see a problem at a point in the river, you can trace it back to the landscape and have a list of where to look or mitigate first. And because of this, SIMAP enables the spatial targeting of mitigation actions at the landscape scale. With SIMAP, the problem of diffuse pollution is conceptualised using the critical source areas approach. This approach considers where the potential sources of a problem are in the landscape and the availability of an effective pathway from that source to a river or lake. If there is simply a source of risk which is not connected to the river or lake, then the material cannot be exported and hence cannot impact on the ecology. Therefore, to identify the most probable source areas, we calculate maps of source risks and connections across the landscape to the rivers and lakes. The predicted pattern of hydrological connectivity in the landscape is calculated using terrain analysis based on detailed digital elevation models. The requirements for a hydrological connection are that a point in the landscape must be capable of generating overland flow and there must be a route to the river that is capable of transmitting this flow. If the water was to infiltrate along the flow path then the source location would become disconnected. This calculation is based on two steps. Firstly, the predicted pattern of soil moisture is calculated using the topographic wetness index. And second, the hydrological connectivity predictions are made using the network index. To calculate the network index, the route from each point in the landscape to the river channel is calculated. The catchment wetness required for that location to both generate and export water and material is defined as the lowest value of the wetness index along this route. This calculation then gives us a map of the potential for hydrological connectivity across the landscape. The landscape map of predicted soil erosion potential is based on two parts. The protection offered to the soil by the land cover and the energy available to erode the soil. The pattern of erosion potential is generally related to the land cover. Land covers which have bare soils for parts of the year offer a lower level of protection to the soil from rainfall and overland flow. This means that these locations can have more sediment detached which is then available to be transported. The energy available to erode and transport the material is influenced by the amount of water that can pass through the location and how fast it's flowing. We can capture this with a calculation of stream power based on the integration of the slope gradient and the upslope contributing area, which is a proxy for the amount of water. These calculations then give us a map of the erosion potential across the landscape. This slide shows a typical output set from SIMAP, in this case with the River Eden catchment in Cumbria. The map on the left shows the point scale erosion risk, the map in the centre shows the connectivity risk, and once these two maps have been combined, the map on the far right hand side shows the fine sediment risk in the channels. The areas which are highlighted in red show areas where there is greater risk than there is water to dilute that risk, and the areas in green show the areas where there is more dilution than there is risk accumulating through the landscape. It's the red areas where we would want to focus mitigation actions and we can zoom into one of the catchments within the Eden to look at this in more detail. As we zoom into the small catchment scale, we're able to see the detail which SIMAP is able to provide. The map on the left shows the erosion risk with variations within fields as well as between fields. The map in the centre shows the hydrological connectivity risk with blue areas indicating areas of high connectivity and again at the subfield scale. When we come over to the map on the right hand side, we can see that, that we can identify the potential source areas within this catchment which may be the key areas contributing diffuse pollution to the river channel. SIMAP has been tested in three key ways. Firstly, the pattern of fine sediment risk for the River Eden catchment was successfully tested against the pattern of salmon and trout numbers. Details of this work are in the Rini et al paper in ecological modelling. Secondly, the pattern of predictions for nitrogen and phosphorus was successfully compared with the Environment Agency GQA dataset for 11 of the catchment sensitive farming catchments. And the details of this are in the Millage et al. 2012 paper in Science of the Territorial Environment. Finally, Rivers Trusts have been using it on the ground and are discussing the results with farmers who have found the results useful. It's worth taking a moment to note what SIMAP is not. 
The key point here is that SciMatch is not a full physics water quality simulation model. Therefore, it's not able to give estimates of milligrams per litre of chemicals within the water, and it's also not able to generate a time series of predictions. SciMap will only give information on the patterns in space and not in time. And also, the outputs from SciMap are always relative. It identifies the probable better and worse areas within the catchment and does not actually aim to quantify the actual load. The other key point is that it's not able necessarily to totally pin down precisely where the problems are likely to be coming from. This is due to information which is not within the data sets which drive SIMAP, which might be controlling issues on the ground. Small scale topographic features or management which has changed since the input data sets were produced will may mean that the outputs from SIMAP uh, may not match exactly what's on the ground. SIMAP therefore should always be used as a guide as to where to look and where to look first, rather than taken as the exact output of what is actually happening within the landscape. It's only as good as the data which is available to drive SIMAP. SIMAP sits within a wider toolkit that's available for environmental management. It's not really suitable for national scale mapping and modelling. This is where tools such as Psychic or PIT, with their coarser grid resolutions, come into their own. You would then bring in a SIMAP to make more detailed predictions on about a 5 metre grid within the identified catchments. Once you have identified a set of options, you may then want to look at more complex models to design the detail of the mitigation works. In summary, SIMAP is a diffuse pollution risk mapping tool that operates at the landscape scale. It's based on identifying where the sources of risk are actually connected through to the rivers and lakes. And in doing so, it provides guidance as to where to look in the landscape to find the potential sources of an observed in-stream problem. And it has been successfully tested against both ecological and water chemistry datasets. There's more information on SIMAP, links to the journal papers and further training videos available on the website at www.simap.org.uk